Ryan. I will uh, Alan. Aye. Gilmore. Aye. Martinez. Aye. Sedain. No. Smith. Aye. Cedar. Aye. Price. No. Weber. No. Collins. Aye. The mayor. Aye. Eight eyes and three noses. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> You're a dollar fifty now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you mean that, right? <laughs> well, next step, I think we could look at uh, one tax assessor collector for the entire county, uh, utilizing the city's computers. For another, uh, public health, the libraries, park and recreation board, there's, these, it's just unlimited in all of our functions. There are some things the city does better than we do, and there's many things that, that the county as an entity that handles every piece of property in all 34 cities within the county uh, it would be the natural entity to, to, to take uh, the responsibility. Uh, if you remember back a few years, uh, the county took over the city county hospital, Peter Smith Hospital and uh, we've operated under a uh, hospital district since that time. Uh, the county has also taken over all the welfare. Security comes only from capability and confidence. Happiness is a result of satisfying experiences, and almost always happiness is a result of being able to help someone else. See, to handle yourself, you use your head. To handle a child, you use your heart. Now, we have the finest product in the world and the boys and girls that come to our school. There's no difference in a child because of the color of their skin. They're all children. They all react to kindness, they all react to sincerity, they all react to compassion, and they all want to learn. Every frazzling child that walks in the door of our schoolhouse wants to learn. It is work. Work that one delights in is the surest guarantee of happiness. The past cannot be changed, but the future is still within our power. God bless you all. May this be our best year that we have ever had. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Uh, we got word from the company early this morning to check to check our suit and to check the code numbers on it, which was done uh, before opening time this morning. Have there been any instances of people returning suits to you? Uh, yes. Now, yesterday there were several people came in bringing back all their suits. They didn't bring back just the one kind, which I believe was chicken vegetable, which is supposed to be bad, but they brought back uh, all the suits that they had in their pantry. <laughs> Do you still have the chicken vegetable on your shelf? Yes. Now? Yes, we still have chicken vegetable on our shelf, uh, which will be full according to our company instructions. Uh, we certainly don't want to take any changes. Or our suit. One of your stockers said that a Campbell official came in a couple of weeks ago and pulled off a case of that suit. Do you know why? Uh, no, uh, we wasn't informed why. Uh, this man pulled it off, but supposedly they had some information on this. I don't know. Uh, in order to take no chances, probably he came in and pulled this off uh, in advance. I don't know. Gene, I think it's great. If uh, tradition has anything to do with preseason pre predictions for the Mustangs, it means that we stand a good opportunity to finish in the upper division and possibly go to a bowl game because I think uh, at least the majority of the years that SMU has been regulated to preseason pick in the lower division, uh, we fooled the so-called experts and had a real fine season. Do you feel that this will uh, deflate, so to speak, the morale of the Mustangs at this point, or do they use the armchair quarterbacks as any kind of barometer to finish for the season? Well, actually, I think it should be used as a challenge to the football team. The people that have pride and uh, 
Uh, they're regulated uh, to finish in the cellar or next to the cellar. It would, uh, uh, if they have any pride, it should act as a motivator, uh, uh, an incentive really to do better. And I think that's the way the uh, players at SMU will uh, react. And uh, I actually, I look for a surprising season. Of course, the Supreme Court on their one-man, one-vote uh, theory, which we must follow, says that we have to redistrict after each federal census. And now, within one half of one percent, I'd say that the four commissioners' precincts are uh, fall within this criteria. Well, you lost some counties, uh, or rather precincts, and you gained a precinct, I believe. Are you satisfied with the reapportionment? Uh, well, it was a matter of compromise. Uh, uh, you don't like to lose any population, and especially you don't like to lose any Democratic voters.
are going to try to prevent a united front. Texas is going to be the turning point in the field of student segregation. And we feel we have been in contact with a number of members in our chapter and in neighborhood school groups over the state of Texas that have agreed to send delegates. So we hope to have this as the most tremendous organizational meeting of state neighborhood school groups that this country has seen. The Dallas-Fort Worth sponsors have stated that they will present to the statewide meeting a, a proposal endorsing the Dallas Citizens for Neighborhood Schools Clean Sweep Program and the Dallas Parent Teachers Association petition requesting President Nixon to declare a limited national emergency to suspend busing court decisions and asking presidential and congressional support for a constitutional amendment for neighborhood schools. The statewide clean sweep program asked citizens to withhold support from public officials who do not actively support anti-busing movements and also stand for neighborhood schools. Well, we're going to have some space problem. It's going to bring about uh, uh, a lot of sharing uh, and so forth, uh, a lot more consideration of uh, teacher to teacher and even student to student concerning space. But uh, we are expecting portable buildings to be added as soon as they're available. Uh, we have added to our schedule. We now have an eight period schedule, which will prolong the school day a little bit but it gives us additional space, and therefore we'll be able to handle the students that we have at the present time without uh, too much difficulty. We are attempting to do a number of things besides the additional time for enrollment, uh, and during this enrollment period, we're having members of our student council who are present every day in our attendance office as the new students come in with their parents or without them to take them around the building, show them the building, give them a little bit of a chance to become acquainted. As well as on Tuesday night, that's tomorrow night, our entire staff, the counselors, administrative staff, uh, certain key teachers, drill team sponsor, head coach, uh, as well as student leaders along with the same group of personnel from Marsh Junior High School will go to LG Pinkston High School at 7.30 and make ourselves available to the community there to answer any questions that they might have uh, along the lines of the desegregation order, the plans that are being made here for the academic program as well as extracurricular activities and so forth. We also will have a new student orientation which will be on September the 3rd at 1.30 here in our auditorium. At this time, we will meet with all students new to WTY High School. And we'll spend about two hours with these students uh, in a general briefing session. And then we will take these students, uh, send them to their home rooms, where the home room teachers will work with them for a little while. Do you anticipate any problems with this many new students coming to school? primary goal at that time was to determine who was in the building and, and who would have suffered this blood loss. Uh, we did receive information of some individuals that were in the building and we began checking with the individuals to see if they were all right or if they had suffered some type of wound that would cause them to bleed. Uh, Barnes was one of the individuals that we were unable to locate. What sort of suspects do you have at this time? We have three individuals that we believe to be involved. 
we do have evidence definitely linking one individual to this and uh, the other two were at the location what part they played in it is yet we haven't determined was the prime suspect an employee of the company no he was not had he been yes it uh, at one time uh, shortly before this he he had worked for the company but had attended his resignation do you know what motive might be involved? No, I don't. Do you know where the suspect, your prime suspect, is now? I knew where he was yesterday. We did talk to him long distance on the telephone. Uh, I hope uh, his location today will be in Texas. Steve Champeau told me some months ago before he retired that the city of Fort Worth had about 1,500 miles of streets, and, and uh, I don't know how accurate that, that that projection is, but the county has about 1,400 miles of road, and uh, and I feel it's duplication of the equipment that it takes to maintain this type of operation, and the number of people that it takes. Uh, can, a little bit, and I and I think I think that that perhaps with your budget today, uh, I know I for one am, and have had the experience of working with the city and. And uh, and know your operation and, and have a, and I've had a fantastic cooperation from the, from the city department. So I, I think we're we're willing maybe to step in at a rather rapid pace and and, uh, and contract with you. Well, uh, we have uh, I think uh, of all the clubs in the National Hockey League, we we own more professionals than any club in the league, and uh, I think we'll have a stronger club than last year. We drafted this year. Uh, knowing the Dallas team and their size, we've uh, drafted some size, and we hope that we can have a, a tougher team, a bigger team, and a little more physical. And we know we have the talent. We have some real good hockey players down here. And I'm looking for a great season for the Fort Worth Club. Who do you look for in the uh, CHL? Last year it was all Omaha. Well, I think that uh, Omaha probably uh, got hurt as much as anybody. Dallas, of course, lost uh, three good defensemen or two good defensemen, and. Uh, uh, actually, our club in Fort Worth, I think, uh, is probably the one that got uh, hurt the least of the bunch. So I think it's going to be a great race. Uh, Oklahoma City had uh, three or four real good kids last year, and I think they'll be a strong club, too. And I think it's going to be a tough league, really. It, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see it go to six teams, and I think that they'll really have a strong, uh, the whole division will be strong. Great prop pleasure for me to have this privilege to be with you for the groundbreaking ceremony of the Lion Country Safari of Texas. It is often our honor, and I've been there for some time, so I'll say it is a little bit warm here today. You know, I'm more than 20 years in the public service in state government. Well, we did. We consulted with his assistant, and that's really him speaking. Uh, but he was working all the time that we were in trying to work it out, and he did work it out to his satisfaction. But not to your satisfaction? Well, I think there's a constitution, constitutional issue that hasn't been resolved, but we're, uh, at the present time, we're not pushing this. Governor, do you plan any further action? No. What kind of reaction have you had to all this? It's been, uh, I think, good and bad, but I would say uh, more, more good than bad because... Uh, uh, prior, and prior to my TV program Sunday, the uh, wires were running about three to one against us, but now they've just made a complete 180 degree turn, you know. Uh, it gave us an opportunity, to, I think, to explain the situation with which we were confronted. It was a constitutional issue, of course. That was my prime concern. You know, I took the oath of office to uphold our Constitution and the laws of our state. And there seemed to me to be a conflict here, and... Uh, this hasn't been resolved, really. But how will it be resolved? Well, I don't know how it'll be resolved. You know. Or the possibility. 
this is to provide jobs for students that are interested in the option. Uh, they may come by room 401, secure an application, and we try to cross-match jobs with the students, depending on their needs and interests. How many students do you expect will take advantage of this program? Uh, we assume uh, that there might be uh, upwards of 3,000 students. Where will you jo your jobs be coming from? Uh, we are presently working with the uh, Chamber of Commerce, Texas Employment Commission, and uh, other sources to provide these uh, jobs for the students. 